What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we're gonna talk about many of the new features found in macOS Sierra. So let's just get right into it, okay? Enough talk. Here it is, folks. You see the desktop wallpaper. That is a desktop wallpaper called, appropriately, Sierra. And you can find that if you go into System Preferences and you click Desktop and Screensaver, you're going to see the Sierra wallpaper just like that. So you can select that. If it isn't already selected, you can do so to get the latest and greatest wallpaper for macOS Sierra. Now, historically, Apple has been pretty stingy when it comes to storage space, but with macOS, you get these handy recommendations for managing and being more efficient with the available storage that you have. So if you go into about this Mac and click storage and then click manage, or if you go to system information, you can get the little recommendations here in the upper left hand corner. And there are several recommendations or several items that you can check off your list to help you better manage your storage on your Mac. There's the optimized iCloud storage option, which basically will help you save space by keeping only recently opened photos and videos on your Mac when storage is low. So basically it'll offload stuff to the cloud or, or keep it on the cloud and not download it to your Mac so that you're able to get by with a limited amount of storage space. There's also the ability to optimize storage. So you can save space by automatically removing iTunes movies and TV shows that you've already watched and keeping only recent email attachments on your Mac. You can also erase trash automatically. So a lot of times you may have like trash built up for months and it's taking up, unbeknownst to you, a lot of storage space on your Mac. Well, now there's a new option that will save space by automatically erasing items that have been stuck in the trash for more than 30 days. So that's nice. And there's also the reduced clutter option, which allows you to just go in and review older documents stored on your Mac. So basically it's just gonna go to this list here and identify older documents. It lists them um, by size as well. So you can kind of see what you're deleting and how much of an impact it's going to have on your Mac, sort of like Daisy disc, if you've ever used that, uh, but not as pretty. And again, that remove items from the trash after 30 days option that also can be found. If you go into finders preferences, you're going to see under the advanced section, the uh, remove items from trash after 30 days option. So You can just check that. And then any trash in the uh, trash can, that's older than 30 days will be automatically purged. So again, nice feature there to keep things nice and tidy. Optimized Mac storage will basically allow the full contents of your iCloud drive to be stored on your Mac if you have enough space. Now, if you don't, older documents are gonna be stored only in iCloud when space is needed. So that will help eliminate, eliminate some of the files that are taking up space and allow you to skirt by uh, when you're running low on storage space. So another uh, nice provision to keep you to keep you going and to keep your Mac running more efficiently because sometimes your Mac can be full of files and you don't know it and it, it you've you've reached your threshold and it's running super slow and, and you just don't know why is my Mac running so slow well you probably want to check how much storage space you have because you could be running up against a wall and your Mac's not even letting you know so this is helping you to be more proactive in that regard now here's another new feature you can actually store your desktop and document folders in iCloud. So that allows you to uh, ac be able to access uh, your, your desktop and your documents from any Mac. Any Mac that you have signed in with your iCloud account, basically it's gonna mirror across all of your Macs. And also not only that, you're gonna be able to access these files, these files that are stored on your desktop on any iOS device logged in as well. So that's a pretty cool provision. Obviously it has downsides, meaning it's gonna upload any kind of changes. It's gonna be basically be waiting for changes, files that you save to your desktop. Depending on how you use your desktop, it may not be that handy, handy of an option, um, but some of you may like it. Uh, so nice little provision there. Uh, desktop and document folders in iCloud. Now, while we're here, we might as well talk about this option here. Windows users will certainly appreciate this. This is the ability to keep folders on top when sorting by name. So let me show you how this works here. I'm gonna open up a finder window and we're gonna to go to my movies folder, hopefully. All right, so you see just basically random things here. I think this is actually sorted by, this is actually sorted by name, I believe right now. So yes, it is sorted by name, but notice what you have here. You have folders and files all mixed together 
true they are sorted by name so you have this which is f um, and then you have h i j m m m oops p s s but notice that you have folders mixed in there on windows you can make it so that the folders always appear first and then all the files after that well basically what this option does is allow you to make folders always appear first when sorted by name. So you just click that option here and you can see your folders appear first. Now Notification Center got a fresh coat of paint in a Mac OS Sierra. So let's just invoke it and there you go. So that is the new Notification Center. It's no longer really dark. It's sort of a, a light um, translucent Notification Center now and I like it. Now here's a feature that those of you with multiple sound output options are going to appreciate. If you click the volume button in your menu bar, not only will you see a volume slider, but you'll also see all of the output sources right there on the fly, and you can switch to them just by clicking one of them. That is great. Previously, on older versions of Apple's desktop operating system, you had to hold the option key and then click the volume button in your menu bar, and then you would see both input and output options. But now, just a simple click will show you the output options. If you do still wanna see the input options, all you need to do is hold option and then click and you'll see both output and input options. Okay, are you ready for a feature that's gonna blow your mind? Well, let me show you right now. This is a brand new feature to Mac OS Sierra, the ability to rearrange third-party menu bar icons on the menu bar. That is amazing. All right, so you've always been able to move all of the default first party mini bar icons by holding the command key on your keyboard and just dragging like this. But the third party app icons, you've never been able to move uh, for the most part. I, I know there's probably been some exceptions and there's third party apps like Bartender and things like that. But you haven't been able to do the same thing for third party mini bar icons. That is no longer the case. Now watch this. Isn't that amazing? So you can now drag third-party menu bar icons anywhere on the menu bar, just like that, by holding command and dragging, just like you can with the stock menu bar icons like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and volume. So that is an amazing new feature. I know it's small, I know it's not a huge deal. Most of you probably won't care, but I, I just think that is so neat to finally be able to do that. It's finally here, folks. Okay, so now let's talk about another new feature. If you go into System Preferences and then click Dock, you're gonna see this new section here, Prefer Tabs When Opening Documents. And it's set by default to in full screen only. So basically, I'm gonna to try to explain this as best I can, but when you open a full screen application, say like, I don't know, Pages for instance, when you open a new window, it opens a brand new window and puts that window on its own desktop so basically you have two desktops for two full screen um, page, pages documents. Uh, that's the best way I can explain it. Well, this new feature allows you when you create a new window and you're already in a full screen window, uh, it's not gonna go to its own desktop, the new window, but it's basically gonna place itself in the same window and just create a new tab. So basically you're bringing Safari tabs. This was a, a very convoluted way of saying you get Safari tabs in pretty much everything now. So let me just show you what I mean here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up pages here and I'm going to make that blank document full screen. And it's going to be a little slow because again, I'm on my MacBook and I'm running a beta. So just bear with me. So that blank document is full screen. Now, previously, if I would have hit command N to create a new, a new uh, pages document, it would basically go out and create a whole new desktop and place a single pages document on that desktop in full screen view. No longer the case though with this option enabled. So command N, basically I'm going to select a blank document and guess what happens to it? It's gonna place it in the same desktop, just giving it another tab. So now I have two pages tabs, so I can start one document, start, oops, start one doc, man, I can't type, one document. And then on this one, start another. All right, so now I have two documents on the same desktop, thanks to having the ability to have multiple tabs. Now, right now, this setting is only for 
when the uh, pages document or the, the application is in full screen view. If I am not in full screen view and I select new document, it's gonna open up a brand new window. Why is that? Well, that is because I have the default option set for in full screen only, but if I set it to always, guess what happens? Yes, it's going to put the next page in a new tab on the same document window, on the same pages application. So basically if I select always, whenever I create a new document, it's going to put it in the same window, just on a new tab. Very, very nice new feature. And it works with loads of different applications. Now, speaking of tabs, you can now have, yep, tabs and maps. So that means you can have two different locations mapped out in the same application, just on two separate tabs. Again, just like Safari browser, having multiple tabs in the maps app. Now here's a new feature that you iOS users are going to love. Whenever you double space, it will automatically insert a period now. So let's, let's test it out here. This is a double space test. Now double space and it enters a period automatically. Now you don't have to keep that functionality enabled. If you don't like that, if you don't want to uh, bring more iOS functionality to the Mac, you can disable that simply by going into uh, system preferences and then clicking on keyboard and then clicking on text. And now you're going to see this, this option here, add period with double space. Just uncheck that if you don't like that new functionality. One of the best new features to make its way to Mac OS Sierra is yes, picture in picture mode, just like the iPad. So now if you're in Safari or in, you're in iTunes and you have an eligible video playing, you can click the picture in picture button and that will pop it out of the current application and allow you to continue using other apps to navigate between different desktops. And the video is just going to stay right on top of all the content that you're looking at. So I can resize that video like this. Of course I can move it around. It's going to snap into one of the four corners on the Mac, just like that. One thing you can't do though, you can't kind of, you know how you can do on the iPad, move it to the edge and it kind of just docks out of the way so that you have a, a more full screen view. You can't do that with this particular version of picture in picture that could change in the future. Again, this is a beta. So just keep that in mind, but, um, you can, resize it and you can dock it in one of the four corners. So very, very nice addition. And again, like I said, it does work across desktops. It will stay on top of whatever content you're looking at. So if you have a Safari window open, or you have another website open, don't worry. You're going to be able to see your video no matter what. If you like to keep tabs on your Mac, you'll be happy to know that the console app with all of its system status messages has been updated with a fresh coat of paint and it looks really good. If you're a person with limited mobility, you're going to really appreciate this new dwell control feature in the accessibility options. Now dwell control allows the mouse to be controlled using head or eye tracking technology. So I'm going to enable it here. And basically you can do all sorts of things and control your Mac, uh, using a left click, double click, right click, toggle, drag, uh, scroll menu, keyboard system functions and custom functions as well. This is really great for those of you with limited mobility, You're going to be able to use tracking hardware in order to control your Mac. Pretty special stuff here. Now, one feature that you won't find in developer preview one for Mac OS Sierra is auto unlock with Apple watch. I'm so looking forward to being able to try this out. This is something that Apple touted at its WWDC 2016 keynote address and Basically what it's going to allow you to do is to auto log in to your Mac when you have an authenticated Apple watch on your wrist. Now, arguably the biggest new feature in Mac OS Sierra from a nerd perspective is APFS or Apple file system. This is the file system that will ultimately replace HFS plus, which is an aging file system. Apple file system is new. It's modern. It works across all of Apple's platforms, iOS, OS 10, tvOS, watchOS has tons of cool features and it's available in developer preview one for Mac OS Sierra. So the universal clipboard feature in Mac OS Sierra allows you to copy and paste between your Mac and your iOS devices that are logged into the same iCloud account and have continuity enabled. So let me show you what happens. First of all, let me just show you what's on my clipboard on my Mac here. I'm going to paste and you can see it's just wowzers, right? All right. So now on my iOS device or on my iPhone, I'm going to select this text. 
and I'm going to copy this text. All right, so it's copied. So now let's go back to the Mac and let's see what we have here. So I'm going to try to paste on the Mac. See it? So that happened with no, no sort of prompts or anything. It just automatically picked up what I copied from my iPhone and now I pasted it right onto my Mac. That is pretty awesome and it's completely seamless. Um, great feature. So let's see if we can go in the opposite direction now. All right, so I'll just say, wowzers. Okay. All right, so I copied it. All right, so here we are on our iOS device. So I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to paste. There we go. Pretty, pretty impressive. Great new feature. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the new features in the Messages app. First of all, you get the ability to have inline video playback just like this. So you have inline video playback. You also have tap back functionality so you can um, respond quickly to messages using tap back. Super easy, super simple. And you also have, as you can see here, super large emoji. So that is nice as well. So yeah, so you have big emoji, tap back support, inline, not only video, but you also have inline links as well in the messages app. Now, just like on iOS, the Apple Music portion of iTunes has been updated with a brand new look. So you get that extra, extra thick font here. Uh, you get new layouts for the For You section. So when you go to For You, you get recommendations, uh, you get Connect. If you click Browse, you get to see all of the latest and greatest music. Well, according to whatever people think is the latest and greatest, uh, you get Friday's playlist or basically daily curated playlist. Um, you also have radio. Everything's loading a little bit slow on my Mac right now, so I apologize for that. But uh, you get radio, so you get Beats 1, uh, you get Featured, you get Stations. Uh, so it all looks just like it does on iOS. Obviously, this is still iTunes, though, so Apple Music is just like a small, well, not small, but it's a part of iTunes. So some of your stuff is still going to look the same. Like, for instance, if you go to the iTunes store, it's not going to look anything like the Apple Music portion of the iTunes app. So it's going to look like typical iTunes store. But if you choose any of the uh, three Apple music centric tabs, like for you browser radio, then you're going to see a very, a very Apple music esque look, uh, taken directly from iOS 10's update. Now the photos app on Mac OS Sierra, just like its iOS counterpart has been updated. Now you get several new features here. Let's start with people. Now you're not going to see anything yet here because it hasn't finished indexing, but basically it's going to scan your entire library and pull out the faces or familiar faces of people and allow you to quickly search on those faces. And then you also get places, which allows you to see all the pictures that were taken in specific locations. They're actually placed on the map in those specific locations. And then you can access your photos that way. And there's also intelligent search. So let me give you a quick example. If I search for the word cat, guess what? It's going to find all the pictures in my library that contain cats, just like that. And last but not least, you have the new memory section, which is also found in the iOS counterpart. And memories will basically create a montage based on photos and videos taken in specific places or at specific times. It really is an impressive feature. It helps you to sort of reminisce and, and think about some of the things you've done, uh, some of the events you've had. If you've had any special events, it will create uh, montages based on those events and based on those dates and places that you went and it really is impressive. I like this feature a lot. Okay, so let's talk about Siri. Siri can be invoked in a variety of different ways. Of course, you see the Siri icon on the dock, you can use that, or you see the Siri icon in the menu bar, you can use that, or if you go to the uh, launch pad, you can access the Siri button there, or you can search for Siri in Spotlight, so just do Siri like that, and then you can click on it like that, or you can go to the Applications folder, 
<laughs> as you can see, there's just tons of ways to invoke Siri, and it probably is even more than that. Probably can even do it from the command line if you wish. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that there's so many ways to access it. And that's not even all. You can also access Siri by using a keyboard shortcut. And I highly recommend that you go ahead and set that up. You can do so in System Preferences. And if you click on Siri, you're going to see the ability to add a keyboard shortcut. Right now, it defaults to Function Space, which is actually a pretty cool shortcut. I think I'm going to keep it on there. But you can also customize it if you wish. Uh, there's a global uh, enable disable option here. Uh, so if you check or uncheck that, you can enable or disable Siri. You can also uh, hide or remove it or hide or show it in the menu bar just by using this option. And just like on iOS, there's the language option. You can change the Siri voice. You can turn on or disable uh, voice feedback. And here's a really cool option for the Mac, mic input. So you can choose which microphone you want to use as Siri input. And I'm using a third party microphone, not my internal microphone, as you can see right here. So lots of things to consider when, when using Siri, but let's just get on to it and talk about some of its features and some of the things it can do. So right now I'm going to ask it to book a restaurant in Chicago for 7 p.m. So let's try that out. Book a restaurant in Chicago for 7 p.m. Okay. All right. So you can just click on whichever one you like and you can get information about that particular restaurant. Uh, you get directions. You can see how long it's going to take to get there. You get photos, phone number, all that jazz. Pretty cool. Now you can also search for finder items. So let's try that out. Find iOS 10 features in my movies folder. Who won the Warriors game? When's the next Warriors game? Okay, so say I wanted to basically keep that in my notification center. I can click the little plus sign here and that will basically pin that into notification center so that I can easily access that. Um, so there it is right at the top. So now I won't forget that the Warriors play on Sunday. All right, so let's try something else really cool. Search the web for images of Steve Jobs. All right, so now you can take those search results and drag them directly over to a document, for instance. So let's just take this one and you can just release it right into a document just like that. What if you're running low on space? How much free space do I have on my Mac? Add Zach to my 10 p.m. meeting. How do you spell egregious? Play Beats 1. What's the weather in Fukuoka? What time is it in Tokyo? Show my photos from yesterday. So ladies and gentlemen, that is our hands-on look at over 30 new features for macOS Sierra. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.